guys, part two of this book. I am back of charge of the lightning bolts of the notebook of doom. We're back on this page. So Alexander, Rip, and Nikki finally reached to the shiny new lunch room on the second floor. Look, said Nikki, said, pointing to an electronic screen on the wall. A normal lunch for once. Yeah, she Rip shouted. He high-fived Alexander. Kazap! The three friends were jolted back by a quick, painful shock. Ow! So Alexander, why do we keep getting shocked today? Are you dragging your feet on the new carpet? Said Nikki. Sometimes that can make you get zapped. Bzzzt. Then a, a menu screen flickered and the words changed. You better not bug us or else. You guys, Alexander whispered, I think that message is a warning. For us. Nikki scrunched her, uh, scrunched up her face. What are you, what are you getting at, Salamander? Alexander yanked the notebook from his backpack. What if there's an invisible monster in our school? He said. Maybe he wrote the message. He flipped the notebook open. Manta X-ray. Invisible floating flatfish. Habitat. Tap tap. Any hard to reach place. Behind the behind the television, the top shelf of the bookcase under under the refrigerator. Splorp. Manta X ray slime is good for oiling a bike chain. Diet. Invisible floating cupcakes. Behavior. These monsters use their tails to pull pranks like. Tying shoelaces together, unscrewing the pepper shaker, turning off lights. Warning! Manta x-rays leave a slime trail. Don't slip! Chapter 7. Walkie talk and walkie talkie cross. Shouty! Alexander closed the notebook. There's no Manta x-ray, said Rip. We'd, we'd, see, he's, we'd see slime everywhere. Good point. Alexander. But these is but this there is definitely something weird going on. He squinted at the menu. That clearly looks like a warning to me. And what does that jag darrow mean? I feel like I've seen it before. Maybe the cafeteria workers haven't figured out the new menu, said Nikki. Grown ups always have come in trouble with computers. Bzzzt. A second later the screen changed black. Back, sort of. No! Rip shouted at the screen. Go back to Snickerdoodles! The three friends got got their trays and took a seat. Alexander used his fork to draw a zigzag air on, on his cheesy banana shrimp loaf. Just then, a woman in a gray suit rushed in the cafeteria, cheerful as a tombstone. Tom, tombstone. It was Principal Vanderpants. She was yelling and she was yelling into her walkie talkie. We're losing power to the lights, the escalators, and the snack machines. You're the electrician. Fix the electricity. The voice on the other end sounded scared. Yes, ma'am. I'm on the roof. Your power level is down to 3%, but uh, I'm not sure where their electricity is going. Well, figure it out, said Mr. Vanderpants. The star show is tomorrow, and it, and it had better go off without a hitch. She marched out of earshot. Wow, did you hear that, asked Alexander? Yeah, <laughs> said Rip. Our new school has snack machines. Now, shrimp loaf, said, said Nikki. The part about the school about having electrical, electrical powers. And problems. Alexander pushed his tray aside. It's not just the school that's having problems. This morning, my dad dad's car battery died, and before that, my alarm clock started working. His jaw dropped. My clock! It flashed the same jag arrow as the lunch menu. Hmm, said Nikki. I guess that arrow could be a warning. Big deal, said Rip. I've got. I got five warnings per day in kindergarten. 
the three friends returned their trays and began the long walk up to class. Chapter 8, Teacher's Pets. Oh my word, said Dr. Tallow, as her students slumped into her seat. You all are out of breath. No kidding. I said, Rip, we just climbed up seven flights of broken escalators. Dr. Tallow walked to the odd door at the back of the room. The door had a keypad instead of a handle. Well then, she said, perhaps it's time for a treat. She punched in a code, then the door swung open. Follow me. The students looked at one another. They followed it. They followed her inside. Welcome to our brand new state of the art classroom pet zone. Snakes, are you serious? Said Dr. Tallow. This is where we learn all about these incredible animals. The room was, the room was bright, and, bright and clean with cages along the walls. The cages had hold, held every kind of, of classroom pet. The students perked right up. Today's lesson is about cocoons, Dr. Tallow said. Cocoons pr protect certain kinds of, kinds of insects as they grow. Can anyone name an uh, insect that makes a cocoon? Easy, said Neki. A butterfly. Ooh, sorry, not quite, Doctor said Dr. Tell. A butterfly comes from a chrysalis. A moth comes from a cocoon. Nikki frowned at her teacher. And Dr. Tell waved everyone to a, a small glass case. Look closely, said Dr. Tell. See if you can find a cocoon in here. Alexander spied the cocoon right away. Hey, right away under the leaf. Because before he could point it out, bzzzed, bzzzed, the room went dark. Students gasped. A moment later, a red light on the ceiling and began flashing. It made strange shadows under Doctor Tell's eyes. That's the safety light, she said. It comes on. It comes on when there is a power outage. The regular lights flickered back on, falling, followed by a buzzing sound from an intercom. Students, this is Principal Vanderpants. We're having power pro problems, for so class is canceled. You will have recess outside for the rest of the day. And the students cheered. Alexander watched a hermit crab touch, tuck itself back into its shell. To make up today's missed classes, continued Miss Vanderpants, You'll have no resets for the rest, and rest two weeks. The cheering, the cheering stopped. The crab came out of its shell. Chapter 9. Don't walk. The all-afternoon recess seemed to, fly, seemed to fly by on shiny new swings, slides, and monkey bars. Alexander, Rip, and Nikki walked away from the, play, walked away from the playground happy and tired. Look, said Nikki. She pointed to the school. Now the whole building's dark. Rip grinned. Maybe there's no power means all day recess tomorrow. I don't get it, said Alexander as he unlocked his bike. Our school has a wind fan and solar panels. It should be powering itself. They walked a few blocks and stopped at the busy intersection. Honking cars were backed up in all directions. Whoa, said Nikki. Major traffic jam. All these cars are waiting for a green light, Rip said, looking up at the stoplight. Alexander followed Rip's, ga Rip's gaze. The sunlight was dark. The stoplight was dark. Alexander shook his head. Let's cross the street and get out of here. They looked at they looked at the crossing signal. It showed a red stop. Hand for a few seconds, then switch to a green walk figure. Then bzzz, the walk figure became a skeleton. A skeleton? So how'd that get up there? The signal flashed again. The skeleton was replaced by a zigzag arrow. Look! 
Alex Alexander. The same shape for my clock in the menu. Another warning, said Nikki. Is everything in town going, going wonky? Well, everything that uses electricity, said Alexander. You are right, said hey, Alexander. There must be, this must be the work of the monster. So we're... He leans his bike against the mailbox and pulls out the notebook. Maybe a rust buster? Rust buster. Metal eating monsters. Habitat. Shipyards, iron, iron ma and used car lots. Wee oo, wee oo. Rust busters love to chase chase fire and fire engines. Diet. Dishwashers, bulldozers, lawnmowers, any kind of metal machine. Behavior. These monsters breathe a cloud of mist that causes metal to instantly rust. Mmm, cinnamon. Warning! Rustbusters are allergic to wood. Hide in a tree house to be safe. That can't be right, said Nikki. Machines aren't being eaten. They're just losing power. Bring! Alexander's dad posted up on his bike. Hey, kiddos, traffic's a nightmare, he said. Good thing we didn't take the car today. Yeah, said Alexander. You know, Alexander's dad went on. This this whole day hey, had been bonkers. My dental chair kept folding on people. I even called, I, and I called every electrician in town, but they were all busy. Alexander looked at Rip and Nikki. Well, hurry home, said Alexander's dad. Bring, bring. His, his dad biked off. Alexander strapped on his helmet. Keep on ironing your lights and clocks and stuff, he whispered to Rip and Nikki. A glowing green bug flew, flew past Nikki's nose. A lightning bug, said Nikki. They were all over my yard last night, said Alexander. But in the daytime? So Rip, weird. The three friends watched as a lightning bug land on the crosswalk signal. The zigzag air blinked. And it went, then it went dark. The honking car is grooving louder. Alexander waved to his friend. They rode off to catch up with his dad. Chapter 10. Green Lightning. The next morning, everything seemed to be back to normal. Alarm clock worked. No traffic jams. No stoplight surprises. Alexander met Rip and Nikki in the school lobby. The lights were working, the escalators were working, and Mr. Horsley was working. M maybe we were wrong, guys, said Nikki, uh, as they rode up the escalator. Yeah, said Rip. Maybe the screws stuff up yesterday were just plain old electricity problems. You're right, said Alexander. Everything seems normal, but how could all stuff all over town just fix itself overnight? And besides, what, what about those messages we saw? A monster, a monster must be to blame. Rip and Nikki shrugged as they had, headed into class. Hello, dearies, said Dr. Tell. Take your seats. As Alexander sat down, he heard a rumble of thunder. Everyone turned to look outside. The sky was perfectly blue and cloudless. And then, flash! A streak of green lightning and filled the sky. The, se the students sat up straighter. Green lightning? Said Alexander. Well, that's odd. Said Alexander. I mean, said Dr. Tello. There is another flash. The boy next to Alexander jumped. There, there, said Dr. Tell. Don't be scared. She opened a cabinet and pulled out a poster. I'll teach you how to stay safe from lightning. She tacked to the poster to the wall. Lightning is frightening. Stay indoors when you see lightning. Head for a shelter when you hear thunder. Never take a bath during a th thunderstorm. Take it from me, Linda the Lightning Rod. What's a lightning rod? Alexander asked. It's a metal pole that attracts lightning. It's a, a Dr. Tell. Benjamin Franklin invented it. Lightning strikes the rod instead of sh striking the house. Then the electricity flows safely through the rod down to the ground. 
Brum. There was another rumble of thunder, but still no clouds. Lightning rods protect houses. Do you know what can protect you from electricity? Dr. Tao continued. Rum, rubber. Here, feel this. Here, feel, feel it. He, he passed around a pair of rubber gloves. Rubber gloves, rubber gloves, rubber blocks the flow of electricity. Maybe they should just build rubber houses, said Rip, as green lightning filled the sky. Bzzz. The lights in the home, in the room flickered. Dr. Tao looked at the clock. Let's head to the planetarium. I really want you to see the star show, and I'm worried we may ha have more electrical problems problems heading our way. More electrical problems? Thought Alexander. He looked around. Then he stuffed the rubber gloves in his backpack. Chapter 11. Written in the stairs. The big lights overhead kept flickering as Alexander's class headed into the hall. Huh? said Rip, stopping at the escalators. The escalators were running, but they were all going down. One by one, the students leapt, leapt onto the escalator, escalator and ran as, uh, as fast as he can, as fast as they could against the falling the steps. It's like a treadmill, said Nikki between breaths. <clears throat> That this star show, said Rip, had better be awesome. No <sighs> kidding, Alexander huffed. Finally, the panting suits fish, finished their climb. Oh, they were exercising, which sounds good. And there was a glass walled room full of the full of plants. So the greenhouse. Hey, said Nikki. This is where we fought the the veggie monsters. Alexander hunched up, gasping for breath. He was seeing stars. No wait, another lightning bug? He reached out to catch it. Bzzzt, a tiny spark out jolting his hand. Alexander yelped. Did you see that? Huh? Said Rip. I I just got zapped by a lightning bug. Said Alexander. He looked around, but the bug had flown off. Very funny, weenie. Said Rip. Lightning bugs don't zap people. Maybe not regular lightning bugs. Said Alexander. Come on, guys. Said Nikki. The planetarium is this way. They followed their classmates up a tour. Up a tw twisty staircase. It led to a bubble-shaped room with recliner chairs along the along the walls. Oh, said Rip. We're inside that little dome on top of our school. Mr. Horsley said the control panel, turning knobs and pressing buttons. Welcome to the Star Show, he said. Have a seat, and don't be scared if it gets really cold. Dark! The lights dimmed. Hundreds of stars covered the ceiling. Ooh, said everyone. They are all stargazed in silence. But then with a low hum, the stars began to move. They danced around the ceiling, forming pictures like a giant dot-to-dot -dot puzzle. A winged horse! said Nikki. A crab, said, he said Rip. A bear, he said, said Alexander. He leaned over to Mr. Horsley. These stars are so cool, but I haven't turned on the star machine yet, said Mr. Horsley, flipping switches. Bzzz. The stars flickered and began, glowing, and began glowing neon green. Huh? said Rip. Green stars, sir, whispered Nikki. Alexander sat bolt upright. Upright. They're not stars, he said. They're lightning bugs. These those guys really get around, said Rip. The bugs flew every every which way. Then they came up together to spell a message. 
SSMP, stay he off the roof. Those bugs, said Nikki. They must be monsters. The bugs, the bugs vanished. The room went dark. Chapter 12, a bright idea. Alexandra could hear the screams of freaked out students and Mr. Horsley running around the pitch black planetarium. Nikki! Alexander shouted. What can you see with your night vision? Everyone is scrambling to find the exit, he, she said. We've got to get the other students out of here, but it is too dark. You need light, weenie, said Rip. Stand back. It's my time to shine. Rip stamped his foot. He, his shoe made a flash of light. Rip! You're a genius! Alexander said, keep doing that. Rip stomped his place. Lightning, lighting, r r Rip stomped in place, lighting up the room um, every couple of seconds. Everyone! Alexander yelled. Walk towards Rip's shoe light. He's near the exit. Then Mr. Horsley will lead you back to class. Mr. Horsley peeked out from his mm, hiding spot. I will? Oh, right. I will. Follow me. He led the other students out of the planetarium. What about us? Asked Nikki. Rip was still stomping, but a little slower now. Yeah, are we going downstairs too? Nope, we're going upstairs. To the roof! Alexander said Alexander. He pointed to our nearby ladder. It led up to a hatch, hatch in the ceiling. Rip stopped stomping. The room went back to being dark. Are you nuts? said Rip. That warning said to stay off the roof. And don't forget about the lightning. Said Nikki. We, sh uh, we should not be up there when it's lightning out. But it's not real lightning, said Alexander. Monsters are behind this. We've got to get up uh, mm, there and stop them. Bzzzt. The lightning bugs suddenly lit up the dome above their heads. Now the bugs were glowing all kinds of colors. Pink, purple, yellow, green, and blue. The lightning in the bugs swirled around and then lined up into a pointy, pointy zigzag formation. Hey, there's that jagged arrow again, said Alexander. But wait, it's not an arrow. It's a lightning bolt. The lightning bolt shape flew in place for a moment. Then it zoomed straight, straight Alexander's head. Bzzz, chapter 13. Bzzz, zap! Ow! Yipes! Alexander dove behind a row of seats. The swarm of lightning bugs just missed him. The bugs smashed into a control panel. The planetarium lit up like a disco. The bug spun up in a dizzy whirl. Then he darted towards Alexander, Rip, and Nikki. Watch out, guys! Alexander, their zaps hurt. <clears throat> a pink bug zapped Rip's ear. Ow! You weren't kidding! A blue bug zapped Nikki's hand. Ack! Bzzzt. A yellow one zapped Nick Alexander on the nose. Cut it out! The three friends waved and danced and flailed their arms like string puppets. Quick! Alexander yelled. To the, to the roof! They scrambled up the ladder, surrounded by a cloud of angry zapping bugs. Clack! They popped out, they popped out of the hatch. The air on the roof felt dry and crackly. Green forks of lightning ripped through the sky. Bzzzt, ouch! Yelled Rip. He swagged a bug, knocking it to the ground. He smiled and lifted his foot above the bug. Squishy time! He, he said, stomping down hard. His shoe flashed, but the bug had zipped out of the way. It hovered near his shoe and started humming loudly. The rest of the bugs froze in midair. What's happening? asked Alexander. 
At once, all the lightning bugs started buzzing around Rip. Go, get away! And Rip sound. He danced an angry sh jig. <laughs> he danced an angry jig, but but the bugs stuck to his blinking shoes. And the bugs flew up high and out of sight. Rip to Rip took a step. <laughs> his shoes no longer. <laughs> His he danced angry jig, but the bug stuck to his blinking shoes. Then the bugs flew up high and out of sight. Rip took a step. His shoes no longer blinked. Did you see that? He said, those dumb bugs just sucked the power from my light-up shoes. Alexander's eyes widened. That must be why my clock and the pencil sharpeners and the stop lights all stopped working. I bet these zapper bugs have been sucking power out of everything. And that's why the escalators and the um, and the lights have been wonky, too, Nikki added. Alexander looked around. Huge cables ran along the rooftop. They were connected to a huge and giant metal box. This die oh must be what Vanderpants was what Miss Vanderpants was talking about. Oh, that electrician. He said, the school's power is down to zero. Hum. Look, said Nikki. She pointed to a nerby antenna tower. All the humming zapper bugs zoomed up, up, up. A giant glowing green roundish thing hung from the to top of the tower. Arcs of lightning shot out from the pod. So that's where the crazy green lightning's coming from, said Rip. The zapper bugs zipped around the pod. Humming and flashing. One by one, they zapped, they landed on the pod, and blorp, they all, all were absorbed to it. What is that thing? asked Rip. It's a cocoon, said Nikki. Man, oh man, said Rip. The moth inside must be gigantic. <sighs> A cocoon blasted open with an explosion of sparks. A nine-foot-tall bug bursted out. Who are you calling a moth? It, it grunted. Chapter 14. Bug out! The mo giant bug unfurled it w its wings. The monster had six legs and a fat, round tail that glowed neon green. Finally, said the monster. And a buzzy voice, and as though it was speaking through a kazoo. My zapper bugs have charged me up enough to break me free, to break free from my cocoon. Alexander looked at Rip and Nikki. All three of them took a few steps back. The monster narrowed its bug eyes. Where do you think you're going? No one escapes the mighty thunderbug. The insect clapped its wings together, creating an ear smashing an ear smashing crash of thunder. The blast knocked Alexander Rip and Nikki down like bowling pins. Kaboom! Look at this marvelous electrical system, said the thunderbug. With three of its legs, the monster pointed to the giant wind fan, the the uh, the solar panels, and the power level box. Alexander sh sat up. His head was ringing. Rip and Ni Di Nikki looked dizzy, too. Your new school was a perfect place t to nest, the thunderbug continued. I've drunk up all its power. In the static electricity from the carpet. Whoops. The monster clapped its hands, making making little sparks in the air. Nikki got to her to her feet. Why but why do you need all this power? she asked. Alexander and Rip stood beside her. The monster blinked its bug eyes. To zap people, of course! You human swat! Smoosh and zap bugs every day. But now I'm doing the zapping. The monster's tail crackled with electricity. The 
Thunderbug blasted a bowl of green at lightning green lightning at the SSMP. Kazap! Chapter 15. Amped up. Rip ba Bonkowski was tr quick, strong, and good at shoving people to the ground. So without thinking, he shoved Alexander and Nikki aside. In charge of lightning exploded on t onto his chest. Ub, 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 ub. Rip shook in place as as green spark traveled up and down his legs. Rip! shouted Alexander. You're going green, said Nikki. Buzz the th ha! Buzz the thunderbug. One pass down, two to go. Ripped to took a wobbly step. I'm okay. My arms and legs legs just feel numb, like they fell asleep. Whoa! His knees buckled and he fell onto a toolbox. Wrenches and hammers spilled out. Bwah ha! Bwah ha ha! The thunderbug's laugh sounded like a chainsaw. The monster leaned over Rip, poking him in the arm. My zap has totally numbed you. Now lie still while I zap your little friends. Then I'll swat all three things, three of you, with my thunderclap wings. The monster looked up. Who's next? Alexander and Nikki stood on either side of the thunderbug. Alexander saw Nikki reach down to pick up one of the spilled wrenches. It was huge, the size of a baseball bat. She smiled. I'm next, said Alexander. You can catch me. He jumped over some cables and crouched behind the power level box. Oh, please said that thunderbug. You can't outrun me. I'm lightning fast. The monster fired another lightning bolt. Kazap! At Alexander, he ducked. The power, the bolt hit the power level box, showering the roof with sparks. Alexander watched the power level dial move up to from zero to five percent. <gasps> Alexander gasped. That blast gave power back to the school. Drat, I missed, said said the thunderbug. Next time I'll I'll wonk. Nippy had jumped out from behind an air duck duck. She she swung the wrench at the thunderbug's <laughs> sparkling tail. Nice swing, Nikki! Rip shouted from down to the ground. But Nikki was shaking in place, saying, "Ub, ub, 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 ub!" Green sparks surged from the from the monster's tail, traveled up the wrench, and danced all over her green body. Rip gasped. Nikki fell over. Her wrench clattered to the ground near Alexander's feet. Ski right tail," said the thunderbug. "Silly humans! Lightning throat flows through a meadow." The creature turned to face Alexander. It rubbed its wings together, making tiny crackle, crackles of electricity. Alexander felt the hair's, frick, hair's prick on the back of his neck. Chapter 16. Full power. Rip and Nikki lay down, sprawled on the rooftop like dropped action figures. The thunderbug stepped on them, moving closer to Alexander. Run, Salamander, cried Nikki. Don't let it zap you, said Rip. But Alexander didn't run. He reached for the wrench. The thunderbug grinned. Go ahead, grab it, said the monster. You'd give me an e you you'd be giving me an easy target. I'll zap that wrench and blam out. Zap the wrench, thought Alexander. That's it. I know just what to do. Since you're the last pest standing, said the thunderbug, opening its wings. I'm going to give you a supercharge. Ready? The monster rubbed its antenna together. Alexander yanked Dr. Tal's rubber gloves from a backpack. Aim! 
The thunderbug yelled. Its tail sizzled. Alexander snapped the gloves on and picked up the wrench. Fire! The thunderbug gla blasted um, a super bolt um, of lightning at the wrench. Whoops. Hold on, guys. Okay, the bull hit one end of the wrench just as Alexander jammed at the under, other end <clears throat> into a power box. Krzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz